guys, Cartoon Trash Productions here. This is my first ever double review. I'm going to be reviewing two Ray Jiggo episodes, From Pluto with Love and A Star is Born. Let's start with From Pluto with Love, and yes, that is a reference to From Russia with Love. The episode's plot is simple. It's Valentine's Day. Unlike Christmas and Halloween, Valentine's Day episodes of cartoons are very noteworthy. Some people put they are very cliché. But Ray J. Go, being the show that it is, seeks to subvert all these clichés. The episode technically doesn't revolve around romance, although I kind of wish it did. If you have seen the episode Project Pluto, you'll know that Mindy adores Pluto, despite its demotion to adore Planet back in 2006. This continues to show here. Mindy pretends to have a conversation with Pluto about her status as a dwarf planet and how special it is. This is a very powerful scene, and then comes the episode's educational theme. The episode's curriculum is about the pictures that the New Horizon spacecraft took of Pluto and its icy heart, also known as Tumba Regio. Mindy, of course, gets intrigued by this, so she decides to write a song to Pluto. I have to admit, this song is a pretty good song. Despite the painfully blatant autotune, the song has genuinely heartfelt lyrics. It's such a cute song, but not my all-time favorite song of Rage Echo. So, the kids get into Celery's van to go to space, and Mindy is, still can't go to space because so she's five, but she gets to watch on Jet's wristwatch. When they're flying to Pluto, Face Night Fallon teaches them about how Pluto is colder than the coldest place on Earth, Antarctica. And this episode can get a little repetitive, which is what it is major flaws. So what I mean by that is, they constantly talk about how cold Pluto is. I mean, Pluto is cold, but they say... But they say this a lot throughout the episode. Not that bad, it's just... It's good for kids to know this stuff, but it could get a little... You know, whatever. I'm sorry. Um, moving on. So then, they finally land on Pluto and discover that it's so cold that it snows there. And then they learn about how um, Pluto has cryovolcanoes, which is very cool in my opinion. So, the rest of the cast presents their valentines to Pluto, and then they sing Dear Little Frozen Pluto, and it, that's a perfect way to wrap up the episode. And now I will do an analysis on Dear Little Frozen Pluto. Okay, so now I'm trying to rip off Genius.com and um, do an analysis on this song. This song is not about Pluto, no, 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 it's about Mitchell. And totally not saying that just because I ship Mindy and Mitchell. Okay, so I annotated the lyrics. Okay, Dear Little Frozen Pluto, that doesn't mean anything. We live so far apart. This lyric is about how Mindy and Mitchell live far apart from each other in the neighborhood. They do, actually. Okay, I love your little frozen ways and your big white icy heart. Mitchell can be very cruel towards Mindy and her friends. See the episodes Kid Card Derby, Mindy's Mystery, and What Goes Up. But in actuality, he's a nice person. Watch the uh, the Christmas episode, Holidays and Boxes Terrace for proof. I really think you're cute, though. Many thinks Mitchell's cute. This hasn't been brought up in the sh show proper, but let's just go with it. I know you're mostly icy. The majority of Mitchell's appearances have been acting a little rude towards the other characters, but Mindy is strongly implied to see the good in Mitchell, which is why she acts very nice to him. Several times, Minnie sneaks up on Mitchell, much to his annoyance, but not of pure malice. This lyric means that Minnie shows Mitchell that she does care about him and sees the good in him several times in the show by trying to hang out with him. I really think you're cute, though. Oh, and this is the same annotation. Though you're no longer playing in line, this means nothing. You orbit all around this heart of mine. Minnie is obsessed with Mitchell. This is shown by a number of times she seeks up on him and the way she behaves around him. You're really, really freezing, but divine. Despite his negative traits, Minnie still loves him. Oh. And I accidentally put the sequels on here. I'm sorry. Please be my valentine. Minnie's asking Mitchell to be your valentine. Duh. So here you go. Proof that this song is actually about Mitchell. Now let's talk about A Star Is Born. Before I talk about the actual episode, I'd just like to talk about the writer of the episode, Michelle Lamoureux. I usually don't talk about the writers of the episodes, but I have to say, Michelle Lamoureux is shaded being out to be a pretty good writer for this series. The only three writers that the series had besides her were Craig Bartlett, Rachel Lindman, and Joe Purdy. And one time, Christy Inslee. And Michelle Lamoureux also wrote the episodes Not A Sound and... Earth Day Birthday, which are pretty good episodes, and this is by far the best episode she's ever written. Usually in Ray J. Go, there's a silly, comical, or lighthearted episode to contrast with a serious, dark, or tear-jerking episode. 
Obviously, From Pluto's Love was an episode that was meant to be taken seriously. So, obviously, The Star is Born has a contrast with that by being a funny episode. And because Michelle Lamro is super talented, some of the show's funniest moments come from this episode alone. Just check out these clips. Of course you're all invited! So be there, or be a triangle! Actually, Jet, on Earth we say be there, or be square. <laughs> Earth, these are so funny. Why would anyone want to be a square? But triangles are so much more interesting. Beats me to him. Off we go! Off we go. Plenty more where that came from, but I wouldn't want to waste your time, so let's talk about the plot of the episode. Basically, Sydney wants to make a Commander Krista movie, but she's having writer's block. Then, of course, Jet comes and tells the entire clique about a new star being born a few a few hundred light years away from Bortron 7. Then, Sydney finally gets an idea. Um, she concludes that their movie should be about the formation of the star. The next day, casting and filming for the movie begins. Cindy is Commander Cressida, obviously. Mindy is cast as Astrid. Jet is playing both Hydrogen and Helium, and is also in charge of special effects, along with his robot clone, Jet 2. And Sean is playing Commander Cressida's dog, Sirius, because reasons? Okay, let me get this straight. The actual pet is not playing the movie pet, but I am. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then they start filming, blah, blah, blah. It's just, I have some questions. Like, what does it mean when a star is born? Now this is where things get interesting. So Face Like Asa comes and explains to Mindy how exactly stars are born. With a song, of course. To be honest, I like this song a little more than Dear Little Frozen Pluto, mainly because of the lack of auto-tune and screeching. Um, not trying to bash anyone who likes that song. Anyways, this song clearly shows how much of an inspiration blues and jazz um, has on the show's music, which is a great thing, by the way. And afterwards, they finish up filming the movie, and then they go to Jet's house to have a party for the new star being born near Wartron 7, and they watch the movie that they made. While they both run without their flaws, uh, from Pluto with Love and A Star is Born are both good episodes of Ready Jet Go. A Star is Born gets 5 stars out of 5, while From Pluto with Love gets 4 stars out of 5. See you guys in my next video. Bye!